Ya waleta matam sanga. What are the dang your hot dang your hot? What are the dang dang and God dang your hot dang your hot? What are the dang This is the black pot, aka Kuku Show, the way we speak truth to power. Now, here we don't criticize, but if we must criticize, we'll do that on one condition to build and not to destroy. That is why we say we are in the service of God and country. This is the voice of the people. <laughs> And today, my brother, my sister, we have a number of issues I need us to look at. And I need you to follow me with rapt attention. Now, my brother, my sister, there is something here I quickly want to look at, and it's coming from Graphic Online. It says, a Veime rice project has been taken over by a Ghanaian uh, investor and therefore needs the support of locals to succeed. So the headline reads, Ghanaian investor takes over a Vehime rice project, seeks support of locals for success. And I read, a Ghanaian investor has taken over the Avehime rice project in the central town district in the Volta region with a promise to turn things around. Now, the investor, Christian Podo, and his company, Chris Pod Farms Limited, will be the third entity to manage the project, which has the potential to produce over 800,000 tons of rice every year saving the nation almost $600 million in rice imports. Now, the new attempt to revive the project comes after previous management by U.S. entity uh, Prairie, Texas Incorporated, PTI, with the company uh, Prairie Volta Limited, PVL, which ended in Fenwa in 2016, and the Quality Grain Company, which ended in a scandal causing financial loss of almost 20 million American dollars to the state and the jailing of four former top police officials in 2004. I'll leave it here. My brother, Aveime Rice Project is probably the biggest rice project in Ghana. We know about the uh, Afife rice. We know about Aveime. My brother, my sister, we also know of Nasia. We have quality rice in Ghana that are unique. The Nasia rice is different from the Aveime rice. And the Afife rice is also very different from either of the two. My brother, my sister, brown rice, very quality, unique in the whole world, is produced right here in Ghana. It looks like this country is so blessed, yet wicked people have been brought into the, this nation to destroy the nation. Sometimes I sit back and I convince myself that God did not create some of us. Satan sneaked into the factory of human production and produced some human beings who he released onto this nation. They are fallen angels. My brother, the white man was in this nation. He was fighting us night and day, stealing from us, raping our mothers, my brother, my sister, and sodomizing our fathers. At the end of the day, we all came together and said that enough was enough and wanted the white man out of this nation. The white man left, yet it looks like we are so much in love with the white man's thievery that we have continued to inherit the thievery that he left with us. And in some cases, even ask him to come in and continue with the robbery from where he stopped. Avehime, my brother, my sister, this is in the Volta region. Nasia is in the northern region. Afife is in the Volta region. If you have been blessed this much, and all you can do to your people and to your nation is to steal and rob to the point that policemen were even involved in robbing the nation in 2004. In 2016, both the Texas company and Ghana company coming together to manage Avehime failed and collapsed woefully. Today, one Christian Kodo 
has decided to take over the reins of Avehime. All I can do is to wish him all the best. But remember, wishes are not horses, or else beggars will be riding every time. Hear me now. Now the only thing that will save Ghana's sick economy is not the gold or the diamond. It's only a bonus. The only thing that will save Ghana from this economic bondage and suppression is patriotism. Those of you who follow me on Facebook, most of the time, late in the night, I am awake, posting a few things, revelations that I pick from my spirit, and I put that out. My brother, without patriotism, you can bring Christian Kodo, Muslim Kodo, Hindu Kodo, Fetish Kodo, every kind of religion Kodo, and put him in there, they will fail. Patriotism is key. An employer employs you as a technician. The first thing you do is to steal the bulbs. Second thing is to pick a wire and sell. Yet you are receiving salary. Most of them will give you the excuse, oh, they are not even treating us well here. So if they are not treating you well, leave. Walk up to your boss and tell your boss that, listen, I think I deserve a better pay. No, you won't do that. You will start stealing bulbs. You will keep the bulbs and go and tell your boss that the bulbs are dead. Now they give you money to buy the bulbs. You return the stolen bulbs and pocket the money. And you think you are smart. When you own your own outfit and employ people, they're going to do the same thing to you. They will not steal only bulbs. They will steal machinery and break your back. My brother, my sister, there is something called karma. Whether you believe in it or not, it is a female dog. This has been my guiding light all this while. I try as much as possible not to do bad to anybody. If I feel that an employer is not treating me well and no dialogue is working, working, I walk. Thankfully, there is the grace. There is a next outfit ready to pay more or to treat better. This is the problem we have with Ghana. Everybody is a thief. The technician is a thief. The lawyer is a thief. The doctor is a thief. My brother, my sister, even the CEO is a thief. The fitter is a thief. Yes, the mechanic, a thief. The radio presenter is a thief. The DJ is a thief. Everybody is a thief in one way or the other. The only thing, my brother, my sister, that humbles them is poverty. When they are poor, then good morning, bra opinion. Meanwhile, he's 20 years older than you. Oh, good, good, good evening, daddy. Meanwhile, he's 30 years older than you. Let him get a little bit of money. And I will win you sad your own. Do you know my age? My brother, until we inject ourselves with the serum of patriotism, nothing is going to work in this country. And I keep saying it time and again, when we were a little younger, there was a man who was preaching domestication. In fact, we turned him into a comedian and laughed at him. Today, I regret being part of those who laughed at him. It was ignorance. My brother, my sister, this man was preaching domestication. D domestication, night and day. He didn't speak English so well, so we teased him and called him an illiterate. Today, my brother, my sister, I have come to realize, though several years back, that brains are not only in the heads of the so-called literate. There are some literates who have no brains. They only have water in their heads. There are some who have never gone to class one. The wisdom that comes out of their mouths, you will be shocked what they know. My brother, my sister, until we inject ourselves with patriotism, forget it. No president will be able to succeed. You can have the men. You can have all the powerful natural resources. Nothing is going to happen. So for Avehime, please, start by teaching the people patriotism. Tell them if it collapses, it is you. If it succeeds, it's you. Give them the best bonuses you can find. Make them part of it. 
and bring in supervisors who have common sense, not supervisors who will join hands with these thieves and rob. My brother, my sister, to God be the glory. This is the blackboard. <laughs> Next thing I want to read and look at is coming from 3news.com, the most authentic source of news online. And he says, you will not succeed. Akufu Ado condemns brandishing of machetes and weapons in Mohammed's um, residence. I read. President Nana Ado Dankwa Akufu Ado has said that he took note of some persons who brandished machetes and other weapons at the residence of former President John Dramani Mahama last week. Mr. Akufuado said that he hoped the persons who did that did not have in mind any attempt to cause violence in the 2024 general elections. If this is the case, he said, they will not succeed. It is my honest hope that the machetes and weapons brandished last week at the residence of the NDC's presidential candidate, former President John Dramani Mahama, are not signs of things to come in the run-up to the 2024 elections. If it is, I can assure them that they will not find no success with it. I want to state for the record that under my watch, no group of people, no matter their political collaboration, would destabilize our country, nor destroy the peace that all of us are enjoying. It will not happen. <laughs> My brother, my sister, it is interesting that the president is saying this, and I respect that. Nobody wants a destabilization of the nation. Number two, nobody wants to see weapons and machetes being brandished. Who are you going to kill? Who are you going to slaughter? We have lost in this country. So the president has spoken the right words. But may I just remind Mr. President, the 11 people who were killed before you became president, that mystery has never been unraveled. Nobody has investigated that up till now, Mr. President. Mr. President, if there's anybody who has destabilized this country more than you, then that must be Satan himself. With your dirty economic policies, with your lie telling, with your over ambition, and with your inefficacy, Mr. President, you have disunited this nation, destabilized us right from the foundations all the way to the roof. I am ashamed of you, Mr. President. It is good. You are warning people away from violence, yet you are a product of violence. You were the same man who told us all die, be die. You were ready to shed blood in order to be president, and you succeeded. Mr. President, today you sit amongst us and tell us those who are holding common machetes are a threat to the nation. You've forgotten that you unleashed soldiers and police with weapons of destruction to destroy lives before you became president. Up till now. You do not even have the courtesy and the passion to investigate those deaths. Mr. President, I'm ashamed of you again. If there's anything that has destabilized this nation, it's because you carried all the money to Chebi and turned Chebi into small London. And people call it small London. I have no problem because Chebi is part of Ghana. But why Chebi? Is it because you come from there? Today, when you go to Ashanti, they do not want to hear your name. Because they believe that you are a perpetrator of evil, if not the embodiment of evil yourself. Mr. President, I'm ashamed of you again. People are holding machetes. How about the machine guns? The machine gun wielding soldiers and police who you unleash on innocent people every now and then. See how many journalists have been brutalized in your tenure of office. Under your watch, a journalist was gunned down in broad daylight. Under your watch, we saw nine children drown at Fana. Investigations have been empty. Mr. President, this is the bloodiest Ghana. 
putting aside the garner of Rawlings that saw the wanton slaughtering of our own citizens. You are the next bloodiest president we have seen. Today, when I hear you complaining about mere machetes, I am sick and tired of your pretense and gaslighting. Now, let me turn over to former President Mahama. So you also sat down and watched people hold machetes and weapons in your house. Were you there? Did you see them? What did you do? You clapped and danced Bamaya and Damba in front of them, right? That's irresponsible behavior. Under no circumstances should anybody hold machetes and spears and shields as if they are there to do a traditional dance. If it's not a cultural dance they were there to do in front of President Mohammed's residence, then they had no business brandishing weapons there. They say when you advise the monkey, you also go forward and advise the banana. I leave it here. <laughs> My brother, my sister, there's something interesting I want to look at, and it's interesting. Our country is under siege. Hey, my God. I'm reading this from Peace FM Online, and I'm going to be very quick with that. It says, who sold clerk of parliament's residence in 2015? Bakuba Malik provides details. I'm glad. He does his research. And he has connections with top people in government. So he's able to bring some of these things to bear. Mm -mm -mm. Hey, we have so much information here. Now, Abdul Malik Kwekuba Akun has given us information. And I need all of us to open our ears and listen with rapt attention. Now, we all have heard about the residence of the Speaker of Parliament under siege. They wanted to sell it. And he himself ran out like a frog in daylight, complaining that they almost sold his residence. It was at the last commission everything was exposed. They tried to play some political jingoisms with that, but it fell flat on his back. Abdul Malik Kwekuba Akun, the editor-in-chief of the New Crusading Guide newspaper has shared detailed information about the individual purportedly behind the sale in 2015 of the clerk of parliament's residence in cantonments. Through two separate letters posted on Facebook, Bakun shared light on the transactions that allegedly transpired in 2015. According to the letter, the property was occupied by a serving officer necessitating relocation as a result of the agreement. Notably, an amount of 600,000 Ghana cities was mentioned as the provision for a replacement bungalow for the said officer. Now, the second letter dated 18 August 2015 showed a lease agreement between the President of the Republic of Ghana, represented by Ni Okaile Adamafio, Chairman of uh, the Greater Accra Regional Lands Commission at the time and Rona Construction Company Limited. The lease spanning 50 years from 1st July 2015 to 30th June 2065 allegedly involves the plot at Cantonment's residence area where the clerk of uh, uh, Parliament's residence was situated. My brother, my sister, so who sold that piece of land? The government of Ghana at the time headed by President Mahama. They sold it, sitting clerk of parliament, and they relocated him. What was the reason? Now, there is something in Ghana called equalization. These people did it, so we would also do it, and we would fall on what they did to equalize, or better still, to authenticate our killing of our nation. They killed 10 people. We came and killed nine and a half, so we are better than them. My brother, my sister, is it right to give out government property like that? 
and to who? This is the country where everything is shrouded in secrecy. The only country in the world where Satan can bear a different name and call himself Akufu or Anado and sit and then start to do things and expect us to pray to God for results, yet they are milking and killing us for their selfish needs and wants. It's a shame. I leave it here. Now there's another thing that I'm going to spend just one minute on. If I one minute it will even be too much. And it says, my child is now a victim of mockery because of my dismissal. And this is Boabin Asamoah speaking. He was dismissed by the NPP. And he says his child goes to school and they are laughing at him. Yeah, they suck your father. Tell your child to tell them that you stood your grounds for democracy and that was why you were sacked. If they laugh at you, then they should laugh at any other person who truly holds the torch of democracy. That's all. For you, you are a hero in my eyes. Alan Chermate will not go anywhere. And you know it. But you have decided to support him and that is your democratic right. I respect you for that. Those laughing at your child, they will soon hail your child and carry him high because their father stood for something. Their father was not a stooge like the other ones following a dead horse all because of positions. I leave it here. Now, this is where I will end it all even though we have much more to talk about. Our time is up and we got to go. My name is Black Rasta. The news at 12 is next. And I will return 40 minutes later. <laughs>